why the US housing market could crash in 2020. As more evidence emerges that the housing industry is on an upward trend, many people are questioning if we are about to enter a housing bubble. Will the market crash or at the very least deflate in the near future? A study polled almost a dozen housing specialists to find out what they think the housing market would look like for the next five years. While most analysts expect homeowners demand to remain strong, there are some signals that home prices may begin to snag as inflation rises and global uncertainty grows. We'll find this out and more in this video. Are we really expecting a housing market crash this year? How do we know that the rapid rise in property prices in the United States won't last? Easy. It's possible that as more individuals sell their homes and inventory becomes available, supply will keep up with demand, causing prices to continuously fall. It might also be possible that prices will reach a breaking point, and home purchasers hoping to save money by securing a low rate will lose interest as sky-high prices eat up any savings. However, if someone claims to be able to precisely foresee when the real estate market will crash, it's important that you double-check what they're selling. Trying to predict when the housing landscape would flatten is a guessing game, as there are so many moving parts that the situation changes on a daily basis. However, there's one thing that experts can confidently tell you. The near future is actually pretty clear. So if you're anticipating a significant downturn to get a better deal on a property, you might want to think twice. For various reasons, most housing specialists believe the market will continue to be robust for some time. Before we talk about how the housing market will most likely stay hot, it's important that we understand what a market crash is. Whatever the current state of affairs for house sellers may appear to be, a short look back in history reminds us that what goes up must come down. The key is to recall why each catastrophe occurred and to look for parallels in today's market. Let's take a look at some of the notable housing market crashes in the past. Number 1. The 1837 Panic the housing market in the 19th century experienced multiple upswings, each followed by a slump of varying severity. Speculative loan methods, unsustainable high land values, and an economic collapse are blamed for the panic of 1837. This was definitely a huge crash in the housing market. But before we continue, go ahead and click the subscribe and like buttons. It takes a lot to make these videos. Your small actions tell YouTube to keep promoting our videos. Thanks. Now back to the video. Following the panic of 1837 and subsequent recovery, the market experienced more spectacular ups and downs. Something happened to shake up the economy and house values dipped just when it appeared as property. Prices would never stop growing. The stock market crash of 1873 is an excellent example of a market crash. Things were humming along. Homeowners were confident that their homes would make them wealthy and then the stock market crashed. Number 2. 1929. The Great Depression and the Wall Street Crash During this time in 1929, the stock market fell and property values dropped after a decade of rising prices. Families with a lot of property suddenly had nothing. The fall also ushered in the Great Depression, which saw property values plummet even lower. Prices did not begin to rebound in the United States until 1960. Number 3. The most recent one that shocked the entire housing market was the housing bubble of 2008. In the early 2000s, almost anyone with a pulse could get a mortgage, and house prices skyrocketed. Homeowners who had taken out adjustable rate mortgages had seen their payments rise by as much as 60% by 2006, as hundreds of thousands of houses went into foreclosure and lenders declared bankruptcy in 2007, the market slowed to a crawl before collapsing totally. These are just a few examples of property prices reaching historic highs before plummeting to more reasonable levels. Despite all these incidents, most experts believe the United States will not suffer a collapse on the scale of the 2008 financial crisis. This is due to a variety of factors, including regulatory changes affecting lending processes. What we call crashes aren't always what they seem, but more often than not, they signal a market slowdown and a downward pressure on property prices. The property market peaks every 18 years, followed by a crash according to history, small or large. This is a normal and expected cycle. When this occurs, real estate speculators scoop up the greatest deals allowing first-time buyers to become homeowners. 
Now let's go back to talking about why most experts believe that the housing market will stay intact this year. Millennial housing demand is on the rise and Gen Z isn't far behind. The quantity of potential home buyers is innumerable, with millennials and younger Americans comprising half of the US population, or 166 million people as of July 2019. This is crucial because according to data from the National Association of Realtors, or NAR, first-time home buyers account for the biggest number of people buying homes, which is 31%. Furthermore, the majority of first-time buyers are under the age of 40, indicating a large buyer pool, a promising sign that demand will continue to be robust, especially when the housing market is at historic lows. According to Polina Ryshakov, Senior Director of Research and Principal Economist at Sunday, a distressed property marketplace, the housing market has seen a little rise in inventory over the last 10 years, which is why it's very unlikely to see a sudden decline. In a few years, Gen Z will approach 30 and will be more financially prepared to buy a home than millennials were at their age. This theory indicates that demand for homes will be as high, if not higher, than supply, with supply still falling behind demand. Demand is outstripping supply. The extremely low supply is also assisting fuel demand and higher home prices, which is another reason why housing experts believe the market will continue to be robust for many years. In a balanced market, the months of supply would be roughly six months, the amount of time it would take to sell all of the homes on the market at the current rate. Today's market, on the other hand, has only 1.7 months of supply, indicating a significant imbalance in favor of sellers. The fact that new home development increased at an annual rate of 6.8% in February, the fastest since 2006, is encouraging. The approximately 1.8 million new home starts, on the other hand, are unlikely to affect home values. Borrowers are less likely to fail to pay back their loans. One of the key distinctions between today's housing market and the one that exists prior to the 2008 housing disaster is that lending standards have tightened as a result of lessons gained and new rules established in the aftermath of the previous crisis. That is to say, people who are authorized for a mortgage today are less likely to default than those who were approved prior to the financial crisis. Despite all these factors, however, there are certain warning signs to look out for that may lead to potential collapse in the housing market. Russia's war against Ukraine, for example, is not a huge help to the country's economy. Energy prices, which were already rising, are expected to rise even more now that Russia's oil has been blacklisted by the US and the Eurozone as a result of its invasion of Ukraine. Increased energy prices will stoke inflation, which, along with higher interest rates, may drive individuals to cut back on their spending. As a result, people may lose interest in purchasing a property.